Perfect. All right, so let's get started. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending where you're joining us from. Uh, we are quite excited to be speaking uh, to you today. And as you can see from the slide, we are focusing on building SI solutions and how you can utilize Truvita SDK to uh, build something really exciting. Uh, let me start with a quick introduction. Uh, Lamar, yeah, thanks a lot uh, for doing that. Uh, I'm the product manager, uh, Alexander Mikhailov, and I'm joined today with Anton Ignatov, who is the front-end engineer at Truvity. Anton has been with Truvity from the very beginning, so he's one of the most knowledgeable people on the team. So, yeah, everything has, he's going to tell about today is quite exciting, and he's the right person to do that. So I'm really excited to be joined by him. Uh, you might be wondering, like, why do we have a product manager here on the call, right? Because we are, it's the hackathon. We are about hacking, about developing things. Well, glad you asked, uh, because we actually want to start talking about why we also want to talk about business and the product as part of this, this workshop. You know, talking about technology and like utilizing technology in its essence is amazing and it's great, but it's not enough. Right. If we talk about really making the difference and applying this technology to make our lives better, we need to make sure that we focus on the real world needs. We want to make sure that this technology is applicable to our day to day, day to day life. That's why what we want to do here in this workshop today is not just talk about the technology, how you can develop the solutions, but also connect the dots between the real needs, real use cases and the uh, Truvita SDK. That's why what you're gonna see today um, presented by Anton is the use case, uh, the demo which is built on top of a real use case. And also our challenges that we're gonna share at the end of the workshop are also focused on how the SI technology can be applied to real use cases. Uh, to get started, let's just have a quick look at the agenda. I'm gonna give a quick introduction to Truvity. I'm gonna talk about what the Truvity platform is, benefits that it brings to both the organizations and the developers like yourself. Uh, give a very quick overview of the platform. Then I'm gonna hand it over to Anton, who's gonna talk about um, in implementing or using our platform to show the real life demo on how it can be implemented. Then we uh, quickly walk through our hackathon challenges and we'll make sure to leave enough time for the Q&A session. By the way, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat or raise your hand, and we'll make sure that together with Anton, like one of us will be uh, either will be either answering them throughout the uh, course of the workshop or at the end um, during the Q and A session. All right, mm -hmm. let's get started. Let's start with the mission. Why why does Truity exist? Why do we want to do things? It's pretty simple. We want to build the infrastructure for the future of credential management. As I just mentioned, technology is amazing. And this side technology has been around for quite some time already. But uh, the technology needs to be applied somewhere. That's why our mission is to build the infrastructure, build the toolkit that would allow organizations, individuals to uh, step into the future of the credential management and be able to uh, build applications and solutions which are based on real needs. That's how we want to revolutionize business compliance and credential verification. Our focus is not just on the individuals and how we can, let's say, use a um, wallet as, a, as an individual person, but we also want to make sure that everyone, including organizations, is a part of the game and um, the credential verification part and the business compliance part is fully covered by the SSI technology. So what's the problem there? What's the problem are we trying to solve with our infrastructure and with our tooling? Uh, pretty simple. Currently, if you think about it, we have very slow and efficient systems which are based on paper where you need to, when you want to open a bank account, you need to submit lots of yeah, paperwork and it takes from hours to days to um, process them, especially when we talk about the business context, right? When you want to open a bank account as a business, as an organization, it might take weeks. Um, and that also implies that there are complex organizational structures. We cannot move away from them. There will always be around. We want to make sure that 
we give the opportunity for these organizations to avoid these complex structures and build solutions to exchange documentation or any information in the simplest way possible. And we also don't want to forget about the regulatory changes uh, because new laws are being introduced every day and we want to make sure that with our infrastructure, with our tooling, everyone can be can stay on top of this game and make sure that uh, they follow the latest uh, regulatory compliance uh, advancements. So the solution that we propose and that we have is pretty simple. We want to allow everyone to digitize credentials for any information exchange uh, and accelerated verification. So we can easily create credentials, share credentials, verify them. We want to make sure that we support complex needs of the organizations. As I mentioned, organizations are very complex and we want to make sure that without tooling, they can be uh, simplified and everything can be automated as much as possible. And uh, the last thing is to stay, as I mentioned, to stay top of on the regulatory game and make sure that you're compliant all the way. You might be wondering why should we think about Truity or like use Truity compared to other site providers there on the market? Uh, we have three reasons for that. First of all, we have uh, more than three years of R&D. Uh, we, uh, as a company, come from different backgrounds, but the majority of our background is in regulatory tech, fintechs, banking, etc. So we know how complex organizations operate. And we distilled all this information, all this knowledge, and we put this in easy to deploy and use APIs and SDKs for people like you, for the developers, so you can focus on building what really matters. Then we help um, transition organizations and individuals from paper-based process to instant digital data management. So these credentials can be shared instantly. And of course, we make sure that uh, all the latest uh, regulatory changes are reflected in our tooling as well. Let me just quickly show you the benefits of Truity SDK for both the organizations and developers. I'm just gonna quickly start with the organizations. Um, as you can see, yeah, it's a long list, but just to sum it up, we allow organizations to have a quick time to market with digital identity. We simplify the complexity of SSI. Uh, with our APIs and SDKs, we increase the layer of abstraction. So you don't need to really think too much about how SSI works, how it can be applied to your particular use. We do it all for you and uh, you can easily uh, just use the tooling to focus on the uh, real drivers. You can fully automate processes and we focus on, on organizations, as I mentioned before, you will be adhering to standards and regulations and the development costs are of course gonna be way lower. But let's now focus on the interesting part, right? We we have majority of developers here on the call. That's why uh, let me focus on the benefits for you as developers. As I mentioned, we believe that we have easy to use SDKs. Uh, we have experience in the SSI area, but we also, as I mentioned, have experience in uh, fintechs, regulatory techs, and we built similar solutions for many, many years. Uh, we also make SSI development simple not just understanding the concepts, how SSI works, but also using um, Truity SDK, you can easily just, well, not maybe stop thinking about SSI, but um, think about SSI in really simple terms. And Anton in his uh, demo will show you how easy it is to use our SDK to build really easy, uh, simple uh, SSI solutions. Uh, what's also important for you is that uh, you can build ubiquitous languages for your, with your subject matter experts within the company. Because as I said, we make it simple and we make sure that you use the same language. And last but not least, we have the documentation. We believe uh, it's comprehensive and uh, we are here to support you throughout the hackathon, but also after that. Okay, let me quickly jump to uh, giving you a high level overview of the platform components of what our Truity offering consists of. And then uh, during the demo, Anton will dive deeper into particular parts of this, uh, of our platform, which will be of most interest for you. 
we will start with the APIs and SDKs. Well, API is the backbone, right, to, to a platform. And I'm not going to focus too much of the, on, on that. It allows you to increase the development speed. As I said, we simplify the uh, SSI stack view. And if you want to get started, it's pretty simple. You can just obtain an API key uh, using the uh, link that we will also share after the um, workshop. And you can just get started. As for our SDKs, they are available in multiple languages. Uh, for the sake of this hack hackathon, we focus on uh, TypeScript and Java, but we also uh, have our SDK available in Python and Go, so you can also explore that afterwards if you're interested. We simplify the complexity of SSI. As I already mentioned, we put the level of abstraction even higher with SDK, so you don't need to think too much about it. And we support you by the documentation and ourselves being available. Let me now just spend a minute uh, on what we believe is one of the key features of our platform specifically for the developers. How do we make SSI simple? We make it simple by using user-defined types or UDTs. So this is the um, functionality that allows you to create custom data models for credential claims. So basically for the information that is stored about uh, inside this credential. And um, by using UDTs, uh, you can make sure that all the possible errors, they are caught uh, before you issue the credential. Uh, the schema is being validated. Uh, the reason it has type safety. And that also allows you to build schemas for different types of credentials. And then you can easily reuse them throughout your application without they need to, uh, let's say, rebuild the structure, the schema of each credential separately. And as I mentioned, Anton will focus in his demo on how you can use UDTs to uh, make create credentials in a very simple and fast way. We have the admin panel. So admin panel is uh, the website that allows you to manage your API keys, as I mentioned. And uh, you can also uh, retrieve your DID so you can start sending or receiving uh, VCs between different tenants. Um, last but not least, documentation support. We cover not just the SSI basics. We also have the quick start guide. We have the detailed guides, how to guides. We have the API reference, so you can also explore how our API works. And we are there to support you. All right. So let's go to the juicy part, to the most interesting part of the workshop. Yes, thank you, Alexander. So the word to Anton. Thank you, Alexander. Yes, uh, finally, something interesting, I guess, despite all the interesting information that was presented before, I guess developers who are more into coding and juicy stuff, might get bored, but I hope that starting from now, we will be able to spark some interest and share some interesting insights to what we have and our experience with building applications and how we can help you build those applications. So uh, we will do this by, okay, uh, by presenting, <laughs> thank you. Um, Demo product, uh, we will share some insights, information, let's move forward. Before, mm -hmm, thank you. Before we start, I would like to ask several questions to our audience so that I could better understand the general understanding of the topics that we're going to touch. Perhaps I will adjust my uh, presentation and information that I will share because I can talk a lot. We have a lot of interesting information, but perhaps that not the right place and time. In any case, we're going to have a documentation and Discord where you can reach us out. So Alexander, the first question. Thank you. So guys, I would request you to react with some emojis, uh, you know, a thumbs up or thumbs down in uh, Zoom. So who knows what is a verifiable credential and a verifiable presentation?
I'm not sure if I can see anything, but it seems that there are no reactions. Quite a lot of people know know what. Really? Oh, okay. There's are. a couple yeah. of thumbs up I, that I saw. Okay, oh, good, good, good. Because I'm afraid I can't see any. But Alexandra, I will trust you. Uh, great. That's that's an amazing news. Well, uh, let's move forward to the next question. It will be a little bit more tricky. Who knows what is a JSON LD, a JSON schema, and what is the difference between them? How are we going, Alexander? Oh, now I see two thumbs, three thumbs up, one thumbs down. Okay, good. We have some heroes who at least know about that. And guys, my respect, that's a big topic especially with the JSON-LD and all those specifications. Big kudos to Manus Porni and the team behind the Digital Bazaar, but oh my God, it was a scary time when we just started digging into that. I hope your journey was a little bit easier, but in any case, guys, I think we have a solution that will protect the ones who is just starting from all that unnecessary complexity, but I will talk about that a little bit later. And yeah, the last but not the least is uh, maybe a strange question, but it will help you to understand the narrative behind the demo and how it's uh, connected with the code. So who had experience with opening a bank account or applying for a loan, basically anything that required some paperwork? I believe everyone. Okay, good, good, good. This experience at some point of their lives. <laughs> I hope that didn't bring a lot of trauma to your life, but we'll see. <laughs> okay, cool. Let's move forward. Good. So uh, when we were thinking how to present the demo, we decided that I see some hand, right? Do we have a question? Or it's, okay, no, okay. Uh, so yeah, when we were thinking what to put into demo application, we immediately realized that it was to uh, build it around some narrative. So we're going to present you a use case, uh, a disclaimer, this use case is not the same as we're going to have in our challenges. So guys, don't be confused, but uh, it will be closely related in terms of functionality and solutions. So uh, to be honest, if we were thinking about joining the hackathon, perhaps that's how we would attack these challenges. But Keep it in mind. Same, same, but different. Okay, so what's the gist? We have a user. Let's say my name is Tim, and I would like to uh, buy a ticket, an airplane ticket for some business trip or a journey. So uh, I would like to uh, request this from some company, airline, perhaps they would request some information for me to provide them. I don't know, my uh, passport, something, depending on their needs. And after some time and processing the information, perhaps checking my bank account, whatever, the, if everything will be okay, they will issue me a ticket the most important part for me is that it will be issued as a verifiable credential. Why? Because I will be able to reuse this ticket and communication with any other parties that I will meet in the future. It can be the airline, some, uh, I don't know, you name it, some companies, uh, maybe... I don't know, guys, use your imagination. I hope you can find something where this reusable credentials can be helpful. So 
that's the gist. Sounds pretty simple, right? Let's move forward. And um, here we're going to discuss, Alexander, next slide, please. Alexander. Hmm. I think Alexander has some technical issues. I'm back, sorry. Yay. Could you please switch to the next slide? Yay, and easy. So let's talk a little bit about the building blocks that we will need to build the application that is going to make team happy. So let's imagine we have nothing at the beginning. We have no schemas, no documents, perhaps not even entities to communicate to. What we will need to do, what is the life cycle of the credentials? And basically the, doc, uh, the communication, it could be some legal communication or uh, work communication, all type of that uh, communication. So the first thing that we need to do is to define what will be the information we are going to communicate between parties? What is the request? What the company would like to get from team to start even processing his request? How the company, uh, the airline will respond to team? What information we will have there and how it can be processed? All that kind of stuff all that meta information that can be helpful for the automated processing, for communication and interoperability, basically the semantics of the information. The next one is we define the semantics. Now we are ready to start creating the information according to this semantics. So we need to have the ability to create, fill out and in the real world to connect together various documents because in real life, especially if we're talking about some legal tech companies, you usually talk about a bunch of documents that are connected in different ways. So this helps to build a graph of relations and perhaps a trust over that relations. So the next one, we have a, a cryptographic key pairs because we need to have those stuff to issue a credential so that we could put a proof on the information uh, on those claims and guarantee that the recipient could easily verify that the information wasn't tampered in the process of communication or that the one who is presenting that information didn't do something in addition. Next one is we need to define the actors. Who is performing the communication? The entities. In our case, we're going to have a team person and a company, some imaginary airline. So uh, the next but not the least is we need to have an ability to list the information and search through that information for a specific kind of data that we need right here, right now. Because let's imagine at the beginning, we have an empty wallet, but in two years, there could be dozens, perhaps even hundreds of documents. Without that functionality, it's very difficult to uh, find what you need and uh, communicate when you need that. So that's it. Next slide. Yeah. We touched the, the building blocks and uh, with that in mind and the use case that we uh, presented not long ago, we would like to present you a uh, very simple workflow that we're going to cover in our demo application. So 
Basically, Team creates a verifiable credential for a request that he will send to a company and that will start the business process inside the company, the airline, that will hopefully in the end will result in issuing the ticket, the flight ticket. So the next step would be for the company to check for all the incoming requests because we should assume that team is not the only client of the company and there could be many requests. The next one would be to process those requests, preferably automatically. Perhaps there could be some missing information and a company would request some additional info. As usually it happening and while I was asking about the opening bank account and all that stuff, I believe quite a lot of people went through that when you sent all the necessary information, but then something is missing or request, your request to provide something in addition. That could happen. That's the real world. For the sake of the demo, we're going to skip that and we're going to focus on the happy pass, but it would be easy to extend it to all those negative passes, additional workflows, et cetera. So please keep it in mind. And of course, the last but not the least is if everything went successful, the company needs to send, to send information about the ticket back to the requester, in our case, team. And we're also going to show you how the company can provide some additional information, so not just the credential about the ticket. Basically, that's it, moving forward. Yeah, so uh, now we're going to switch to the code. And uh, I will need to share my screen and yes. Please give me a moment. Okay. Alexander, can you see my screen? Yes, I can see it. You're all good. Okay. Okay. Amazing. Amazing. Just double checking because previously we had issues with Zoom, but I hope that's not going to happen right now. So pretty strange. Uh, information that you can see here, a big sausage of something. Um, and let me tell you what we've got here. That white sausage in the middle is basically the entire code of the demo application. I have some statistics since uh, at the bottom. We have around 260 lines of code, only one dependency, no dedicated backend or database was used except for our Truity API. And that dependency is the SDK. So um, we are going to run it in the end so that you would see, but for the sake of guiding you through the code and highlighting some interesting information, we're going to use the presentation and slides. So uh, also a note, after the workshop, we're going to share these applications with the instructions how to run it locally. So you will have the opportunity to play around. Let's start. Uh, as I already mentioned, at the beginning, we need to define the semantics. And uh, right now I'm focusing on the documents. We're going to work with three documents. I will go through of them in details a little bit later, but what you see on the screen is everything you need to do if you're using our SDK and specifically user-defined types to define schemas, including JSON-LD, JSON schema for semantics and validation. I will guide you through some details regarding how it's done. And also during the presentation, I'm going to share links to our documentation where you will find some useful information. And of course, guys, if you will have questions, we will be there for you in Discord. 
And again, if you will have any questions, please shoot. Alexander will help me to uh, keep an eye on the chat because um, I have difficulties in monitoring chat and presenting the information. So let's start. We will start with the first document. This is a document that will represent the request. The document, the credential that team needs to issue and send to the company to initiate the whole process. So uh, what we have here, we have a part that is responsible for defining the major and important things for json the vocabulary. We have definitions for lames, specifically this one will be responsible for defining the first name. I, I know guys, that sounds silly, but we simplified the content of the documents to the max just to provide the gist of how things might look. Of course, in real world, things might be way more complicated. And keep in mind that these documents and the way how we organize them is just one of the options. We had a specific uh, scenario for that. If you will have challenges or difficulties to understand how to do that. We have some information in documentation and again, reaches out at Discord. Let's move forward. So highlighted parts are again related to JSON-LD and they are defining the so-called terms and IRI of the JSON-LD. If that tells you something, I, uh, I heard, I remember that we have three guys who are familiar with JSON-LD. So I hope that would be a useful information for you. For the rest, skip it, read the documentation. We have mo more insightful information there. We, ha we have information, uh, sorry, definitions for validation. Specifically here, we are defining that the first name must not be empty. So it must have some value. And also we have definitions for data types. Specifically here, first name must be a string. Basically, the same goes for the rest of the documents. We are defining the information required for JSON-LD, validation if necessary, and the rest. This is uh, specifically the document that represents the ticket, the flight ticket. Again, very simple, just the flight number, but I hope you got the gist. And the next document is the most interesting one. It's a little bit bigger and it's called response. And its main responsibility is to connect the request that was sent, the ticket that was issued based on this request, and some additional information that might be helpful to the requester. This here, we see the so-called definition of a linked credential claims. What does it mean? It's basically the field that points to some another credential. And with such claims, we are able to build a graph of relations between documents. Here we have a, a connection. Let's say this response is an umbrella that defines what is a request and what is a ticket for that request. Because you can have many tickets, you can have many requests. So how they are connected. This document is designed specifically to provide this information, provide this semantics. Again, that's one of the options, but we decided to present this specific case. And regarding the linked credentials with our user defined types, we can see that we are linking to a specific credentials and only that credentials. This is very helpful when you're working in your editor because this will provide you autocomplete, strictly typed types and a lot of good things that improve your uh, developer experience. So let's move forward. That's an overview of 
what uh, specific parts in those de definitions are related to user-defined types. As you see, pretty simple, because for those who had experience working with JSON-LD and JSON schemas, the same representations in those schemas would be three times more and way, way more verbose. We are doing that heavy lifting under the hood for you. So when we're going to issue credentials, all that information will be available there. But when you're working in your, in your code, you are just working with that pretty simple and pretty convenient abstraction. And take a look at the bottom. We have a link to our documentation where you can find more information on the topic of user-defined types. Now let's move forward. It seems that we're running out of time, but I will try to be brief. Since we're providing a cloud API to communicate with a wallet and entities, we need to uh, work with the API. And this is the way how we are configuring API clients. Here we have an important part, the authorization. We are using an API keys for doing that. I don't, to save time, I don't want to dive into details. Again, a link to the documentation. There you will find information. How you can create new API keys in our admin panel that Alexandra presented uh, several minutes ago. So that shouldn't be a big deal. Let's move forward to something interesting, to something related to credentials. So here we basically starting the journey of creating a request. The first things that we need to do is to create a request. And in our case, we're creating a draft. What is a draft? In essence, that's an unsigned credential, but we are providing an abstraction on top of just a plain JSON-LD because JSON-LD is quite complicated. You have a lot of different uh, options to do the same thing in multiple ways. And we are trying to simplify all those tricky parts. So we are providing an abstraction. We call it drop. What does it mean? Uh, basically, you can create a document. You can update it when you need it. And you can update it many times. And also, we're going to store a history of those updates in case if you need to make some uh, audit or work with revisions. That can, that can come handy when we're talking about FragTag and all that stuff. And in our case, uh, since our documents are pretty straightforward, we can fill in information right away. But you can imagine that in real world, you can start filling something in and realize that you're missing information and you need to take a pause. So uh, since we can store the information and continue working with that in several hours or even days, that's not a problem. Let's move forward. Here, I want to uh, backtrace the information that we're filling in to the user-defined types that we defined before. As you can see, we have two fields. They are required fields and they are strings. So we need to provide them. Otherwise, we will have issues with validation. Let's move forward. Again, here we have some additional information regarding a draft, so I will not spend more time. And let's move forward to uh, issuing credentials, like the major part. Uh, here, we're basically issuing a credential from the draft, from a specific revision. And in the end, we're going to get that fancy verifiable credential. Uh, more, in, more info in the documentation. And I would like to highlight some uh, parts regarding the cryptography, cryptographic key pairs, sorry, key, key pairs. We, to sign the credential, we need to get an access to a private key. And in our case, we are 
generating a cloud key pair that you can use. Uh, in the documentation, you can find a lot of information regarding what type of algorithms we're supporting, what type of keys we're supporting. We have support for NIST keys and many, many more. And also we have quite a lot of, uh, we're supporting quite a lot of crypto suits. If you know what it means, that's basically how you're signing and creating a proof for your credentials, but let's move forward. At this step, we already have issued credential and we want to send it to the company so that we could start the whole process of issuing the ticket. One liner, we're sending it to a company that in our case is represented by a DID. Here we have a hard-coded DID because for the sake of the demo, we have an access for several entities and tenants. But in real world, I guess, in your application, you might want to develop something like an address book or this DID, if it might be a well-known, but I don't want to dive into those details because they're going far beyond the scope of the demo. Next thing, finally, we're moving to the part of the airline of the company who is accepting the request and it needs to do something and hopefully fulfill the request. So uh, as we discussed before, there are perhaps a lot of requests every minute or so, and we need to get information about those new requests. We're doing this with a simple search and with some clarification about what we're searching for. We're doing this with a faceted search, specifically defining some predicates on what we're looking for. We're supporting quite complicated predicates. So uh, I guess we can fulfill a lot of needs and this can simplify a lot for you developers in terms of developer experience and of course performance because you don't need to load everything you have in your wallet and then manually in memory filter out something. Pretty handy. Again, more information in the, in the documentation. Here specifically, I would like to highlight that we're filtering credentials by the type of the, let's say, JSON LD schema that was used to issue this credential. So uh, yeah, and here is an example how we can build quite complicated queries around the wallet. So here we're using several searches, we're doing some calculations, and in the end, we're basically calculating what request hasn't been processed so far so that we would just work with them. Let's move forward. We have a list of requests. Now we need to process he them here. Again, for the sake of the demo, we're going to simplify everything and we're going to assume that all the process will be automated, no manual interventions, no requesting additional information and so on and so forth. So here is a little example of how we can work with the content of the credentials in a strictly typed way, because like basically it's a JSON LD, it can be quite verbose, you can, you don't want to bother about all this structure, all those flavors, verifiable credential, data model 1.1, 2.0, and all that kind of stuff. You just want to work with the claims. And here how we're helping you to do that. In like in this specific example, we're retrieving a first name. And if it's uh, equal to team, we're increasing the price. So uh, lucky team is going to pay more. But anyway, let's move forward. Next one, we're doing pretty the same uh, as we did when we were creating a, a, a um, verifiable credential for request. We're just issuing a credential for the ticket and we're issuing a, uh, a credential for response. Sp here specifically, I would like to focus on how we're how our SDK simplify work with linking the credentials. So basically you just have this uh, 
instance of a document, you're just passing it as a claim and the SDK will do the rest. So pretty easy and convenient. Next, again, we're finished with the issuance and now we need to send the information back to the recipient. Uh, here we have a little bit more complicated uh, example because uh, we have two credentials and we need to combine them in a sing single, let's say envelope, which we're uh, using a verifiable presentation for that. Again, more information in our documentation, but I hope you got the gist of what we're doing here. Next, we are moving back to team. We finally received the ticket and uh, here I would, we would like just to show you more use cases, how you can work with the content of your wallet and the content of your credentials. So basically doing search for the credentials of a specific type, we are uh, receiving claims, we are working with linked credentials. Again, we have some simplifications, how to load those um, references, how to work with the claims. And in the end, we're showing that everything is okay. And well, the application working as it should. So that's the pictures and animations looks fancy, but does it really work? So let me switch my screen to my editor where I would just run this uh, application and we will see that it really works and we will see the how much money team has paid for his ticket and what is the flight number so let me reshare my screen okay we can see alexander yes perfect so this is the same application user defined types all that code and we're going to focus on this part because it will be easier to understand what we're going to expect because team should pay 120 dollars for his ticket now let's run it uh we're going to use the cloud installation that i hope all of you are going to use in your applications it will take some time unfortunately I didn't prepare additional progress bars or anything like that. So uh, let's let's wait. Let's wait and see. Now, unfortunately, some time will be taken by my editor because the debugging and running live can take some time. But yeah, it's completed and we have this result that we have here. So the ticket that was issued has a flight number 123 and team paid $120 for his ticket. And basically that's it. I hope I didn't bore you and it was helpful. So uh, we have not much time left, but guys, if you have any questions, please shoot. And again, we are available at Discord, so don't hesitate to drop by and say hello. Thank you, Anton. Let me quickly jump back to the slides. Like we have a couple of more slides prepared uh, for the audience uh, where we're gonna talk about our challenges as well. Uh, just give me a second to get back and Anton, please let me know if you can see it. Yep, we're good. Perfect. Um, maybe just a quick recap. Uh, what Anton just showed us is that we successfully purchased the ticket. Uh, we used verifiable credentials and verifiable presentations. We shared the information between the entities and we used utilized UDTs for preparing the uh, custom credential structure. And as you can see, it's a secure and very efficient process because the code that Anton showed is 
yeah, it's very short and we hope that it will help you uh, to create applications with ease. So let's quickly look at our hackathon challenges. Uh, as you can see, we prepared two challenges for you. Uh, the first one is focuses on the, uh, what we call it, the digital identity wallet for experts. Uh, this is based on the real example. This is based on many things that some people are within our company, but also uh, in the Netherlands, but also in other countries uh, go through when they move to a new country, right? When you move to a new country, you need to... Uh, I don't know, have an employee contract, open a bank account, find a place to live. And this requires all the document exchange that we want to simplify by using verifiable credentials. So that's why, if you remember what I mentioned at the very beginning of our workshop, is that we want to make sure that this solution, our solution, our platform, and the infrastructure that we provide solves real problems and it can be applied to real use cases. So both of our challenges are based on that. In the first challenge, we want you to build the digital identity wallet for experts who are moving to Amsterdam so they can easily go through this process without all the paperwork. And our second uh, challenge is based on the other side, uh, on the uh, bank compliance officer who needs to approve or reject these requests for opening a bank account that come from people like Miko uh, from the first challenge. So we also want you to utilize the power of SSI to uh, retrieve credentials, search through them, and make uh, manual or even automated decisions based on the information available uh, from the credentials. So that's the, our challenges. And to wrap it up, please join us uh, on Discord. If you have any questions, any problems, any issues, we are there to help. Uh, go to the Truity channel. You can access our uh, documentation at docs.truity.cloud. And we hope that uh, you will start building innovative SSS solutions that will change the world soon. So we have some time left for the Q&A in case anyone has any questions. Yeah, I will have to hop off to the next session, but you guys can take your time um, taking a few more questions um, now. Um, but I dropped the Truvity Discord link in the chat. So people can continue the discussion after. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. All right. Does anyone have any questions? Anything you want us to maybe focus on, get back to if you have any questions, maybe on the code or on specific functionality or overall about the company, what we're trying to achieve. We're here to answer all the questions that you might have. Uh hello. Uh I have a question about uh the programming language so are we like uh, is it fixed like uh, what language we are going to use or it's flexible like python javascript uh let me take this one anton or like you can correct me if i'm if I say something wrong uh sure. for the sake of the challenges uh, well let me actually step back a little bit uh our sdk is available in multiple languages typescript java uh, Python and Go, but for the sake of these challenges, we want you to take either the TypeScript uh, SDK or the Java uh, SDK. Okay, 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 okay. So Python is not available. We need to do it with TypeScript. Uh, yes, that's that's the goal for the specifically for the hackathon and the challenges that we share. Okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right. If there are no other questions, as we mentioned, yeah, find us on Discord, post uh, there, share uh, the uh, solutions that you're building. We're quite excited to see what you come up with. And thank you very much for your time. See you there. Uh, we have uh, one question, uh, so I think I will quickly answer to that. It's not available on the GitHub right now, uh, but we will provide a link um, that will be available to you with the information on how to run it. So yeah, but I cannot say right now where exactly it will be available. We're still considering this question.
I hope you, I, I've, I've managed to answer the question. All right. Thank you, everyone. Happy hacking. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.